Neurofibromatosis Type I, Wikipedia article audio. Neurofibromatosis Type I is a complex multi-system human disorder caused by the mutation of a gene on chromosome 17 that is responsible for production of a protein called neurofibromin which is needed for normal function in many human cell types. NF1 causes tumors along the nervous system which can grow anywhere on the body. NF1 is one of the most common genetic disorders and is not limited to any person's race or sex. NF1 is an autosomal dominant disorder which means that mutation or deletion of one copy of the NF1 gene is sufficient for the development of NF1, although presentation varies widely. As of 2015, there are at least 100,000 people in the US and about 15,000 people in the UK who have been diagnosed with NF. Common symptoms of NF1 include brownish-red spots in the colored part of the eye called Lish nodules, benign skin tumors called neurofibromas, and larger benign tumors of nerves called plexiform neurofibromas, scoliosis learning disabilities, vision disorders, mental disabilities, multiple cafe au lait spots and epilepsy. NF1-affected individuals also have a much higher rate of cancer and cardiovascular disease than the population in general. Signs and Symptoms Musculoskeletal Disorder Facial Bones and Limbs Skin Eye disease Neurobehavioral developmental disorder Nervous system disease Peripheral neuropathy Neurofibroma Nerve sheath tumor Other complications Central nervous system disease Epilepsy Glial tumors Focally degenerative myelin Dural ectasia Mental disorder Cancer Cause Neurofibromin 1 gene Structure Inheritance and spontaneous mutation Related medical conditions Diagnosis Prenatal testing and prenatal expectations Postnatal testing NF1 is a developmental syndrome caused by germline mutations in neurofibromin, a gene that is involved in the RAS pathway. Due to its rarity and to the fact that genetic diagnosis has been used only in recent years, in the past NF1 was in some cases confused with another syndrome with vaguely similar symptoms, Legius syndrome. Prognosis Treatment NF1 is an age-specific disease, most signs of NF1 are visible after birth, but many symptoms of NF1 occur as the person ages and has hormonal changes. NF1 was formerly known as von Recklinghausen disease, after the researcher who first documented the disorder. The severity of NF1 varies widely, and little is known about what causes a person to have a more severe or less severe case. Even within the same family, levels of severity can vary enormously. However, 60% of people with NF1 have mild cases, with few symptoms that have very little effect in their day-to-day -day lives. 20% of NF1 patients have moderate cases, with several symptoms that have little more than cosmetic effects. The other 20% have severe cases with several symptoms that affect the person's quality of life. Even in this last group, Symptoms are rarely life-threatening. The following is a list of conditions and complications associated with NF1, and, where available, age range of onset and progressive development, occurrence percentage of NF1 population, 
method of earliest diagnosis and treatments and related medical specialties. The progression of the condition is roughly as follows. The NF clinical program at ST. Lewis Children's Hospital maintains a comprehensive list of current NF research studies. Musculoskeletal abnormalities affecting the skull include sphenoid bone dysplasia, congenital hydrocephalus, and associated neurologic impairment. These abnormalities are non-progressive and may be diagnosed in the fetus or at birth. Disorders affecting the spine include Skeletal muscle weakness and motor control deficits Deficits in motor function in NF1 have been long recognized and have been historically attributed to nerve dysfunction. In recent years however, studies suggest NF1 is associated with a primary problem in muscle function. Clinical findings in people with NF1 include Studies in genetically modified mice have thus far confirmed that the NF1 gene is vital for normal muscle development and metabolism. Knockout of the NF1 gene in muscle results in deregulated lipid metabolism and muscle weakness. It is interesting to note that NF1 is a disease in the Rossopathy family of diseases, which include Costello syndrome, Noonan syndrome, and cardiofaciocutaneous syndrome. The rossopathies also present with skeletal muscle weakness. It is likely that impaired muscle function in these disorders is linked to altered RAS-MAPK signaling, however, the precise molecular mechanisms remain unknown. The most common complication in patients with NF1 is cognitive and learning disability. These cognitive problems have been shown to be present in approximately 80% of children with NF1 and have significant effects on their schooling and everyday life. These cognitive problems have been shown to be stable into adulthood and do not get worse unlike some of the other physical symptoms of NF1. The most common cognitive problems are with perception, executive functioning and attention. Disorders include The primary neurologic involvement in NF1 is of the peripheral nervous system, and secondarily of the central nervous system. Schwannomatosis is a rare condition defined by the presence of multiple benign tumors of nerves that are frequently very painful. In addition to pain, Weakness is a common problem. Symptoms usually begin in young or mid-adult years. A neurofibroma is a lesion of the peripheral nervous system. Its cellular lineage is uncertain, and may derive from Schwann cells, other perineural cell lines, or fibroblasts. Neurofibromas may arise sporadically, or in association with NF1. A neurofibroma may arise at any point along a peripheral nerve. A number of drugs have been studied to treat this condition. Neurofibroma conditions are progressive and include Intracranially, NF1 patients have a predisposition to develop glial tumors of the central nervous system, primarily. Another CNS manifestation of NF1 is the so-called unidentified bright object or UBO, which is a lesion which has increased signal on a T2-weighted sequence of a magnetic resonance imaging examination of the brain. These UBOs are typically found in the cerebral peduncle, pons, midbrain, globus pallidus, thalamus, and optic radiations. Their exact identity remains a bit of a mystery since they disappear over time, and they are not typically biopsied or resected. They may represent a focally degenerative bit of myelin. Within the CNS, NF1 manifests as a weakness of the dura, which is the tough covering of the brain and spine. Weakness of the dura leads to focal enlargement terms dural ectasia due to chronic exposure to the pressures of CSF pulsation. 
Acetazolamide has shown promise as a treatment for this condition. Children with NF1 can experience social problems, attention problems, social anxiety, depression, withdrawal, thought problems, somatic complaints, learning disabilities, and aggressive behavior. Treatments include psychotherapy, antidepressants, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Cancer can arise in the form of malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor resulting from malignant degeneration of a plexiform neurofibroma. NF1 is a microdeletion syndrome caused by a mutation of a gene located on chromosomal segment 17q11.2 on the long arm of chromosome 17 which encodes a protein known as neurofibromin which plays a role in cell signaling. The neurofibromin 1 gene is a negative regulator of the RAS oncogene signal transduction pathway. It stimulates the GT passe activity of RAS. It shows greater affinity for RAS P21 protein activator 1, but lower specific activity. The mRNA for this gene is subject to RNA editing resulting in premature translation termination. Alternatively spliced transcript variants encoding different isoforms have also been described for this gene. In 1989, through linkage and crossover analyses, neurofibromin was localized to chromosome 17. It was localized to the long arm of chromosome 17 by chance when researchers discovered chromosome exchanges between chromosome 17 with chromosome 1 and 22. This exchange of genetic material presumably caused a mutation in the neurofibromin gene, leading to the NF1 phenotype. Two recurrent microdeletion types with microdeletion breakpoints located in paralogous regions flanking NF1, are found in most cases. The neurofibromin gene was soon sequenced and found to be 350,000 base pairs in length. However, the protein is 2,818 amino acids long, leading to the concept of splice variants. For example, Exon 9A, 23A and 48A are expressed in the neurons of the forebrain, muscle tissues, and adult neurons respectively. Homology studies have shown that neurofibromin is 30% similar to proteins in the GT passe activating protein family. This homologous sequence is in the central portion of neurofibromin and being similar to the GAP family is recognized as a negative regulator of the RAS kinase. Additionally, being such a large protein, more active domains of the protein have been identified. One such domain interacts with the protein adenyl cyclase, and a second with collapsin response mediator protein. Together, likely with domains yet to be discovered, neurofibromin regulates many of the pathways responsible for overactive cell proliferation, learning impairments, skeletal defects, and plays a role in neuronal development. The mutant gene is transmitted with an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance, but up to 50% of NF1 cases arise due to spontaneous mutation. The incidence of NF1 is about 1 in 3,500 live births. Mutations in the NF1 gene have been linked to NF1, juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia and Watson syndrome. A condition with a separate gene mutation but similar cafe au lait spots is Legius syndrome which has a mutation on the SPRED1 gene. In NF1, there can be a generalized abnormality of the soft tissues in the fetus, which is referred to as mesodermal dysplasia, resulting in maldevelopment of skeletal structures, meningocele's and formation of cystic diverticula of the dura of the spine, unrelated to spina bifida, radiographically, dural ectasia can lead to scalloping of the posterior vertebral bodies and to the formation of cystic diverticula of the dura of the spine, 
focal scoliosis and slash or kyphosis are the most common skeletal manifestation of NF1, occurring in 20% of affected patients. Approximately 25% of patients will require corrective surgery. Reduced skeletal muscle size, reduced exercise capacity, muscle weakness. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder has been shown to be present in approximately 38% of children with NF1. Speech and language delays have also been identified in approximately 68% of preschool children with NF1. Math deficits, motor deficits are common. Motor deficits due to NF1 are probably not cerebellar, spatial deficit. Lavastidin, normally used to treat hypercholesterolemia, is currently in phase 1 of clinical trial. This drug has been shown to reverse spatial deficits in mice. Simvastatin, a drug similar to lavastidin, did not show benefit on cognitive function or behavior in two randomized controlled trials in children with NF1, Asperger's syndrome. Plexiform neurofibroma, often congenital. Lesions are composed of sheets of neurofibromatous tissue that may infiltrate and encase major nerves, blood vessels, and other vital structures. These lesions are difficult and sometimes impossible to routinely resect without causing any significant damage to surrounding nerves and tissue. However, early intervention may be beneficial. A 2004 study in Germany concluded early surgical intervention of small superficial PNFs is uncomplicated, without burden for even the youngsters and enables total resection of the tumors. It may be considered as a preventive strategy for later disfigurement and functional deficits, solitary. Neurofibroma, affecting a 12% of patients with NF1. This occurs in a deep nerve trunk. Diagnosis by cross-sectional imaging as a fusiform enlargement of a nerve, schwannomas, peripheral nerve sheath tumors which are seen with increased frequency in NF1. The major distinction between a schwannoma and a solitary neurofibroma is that a schwannoma can be resected while sparing the underlying nerve whereas resection of a neurofibroma requires the sacrifice of the underlying nerve, nerve root neurofibroma, bones, especially the ribs, can develop chronic erosions from the constant pressure of adjacent neurofibroma or schwannoma. Similarly, the neural foramen of the spine can be widened due to the presence of a nerve root neurofibroma or schwannoma. Surgery may be needed when NF1-related tumors compress organs or other structures. Optic nerve gliomas and associated blindness, astrocytoma. Frequency A plexiform neurofibroma has a lifetime risk of 8-12% of transformation into a malignant tumor, diagnosis. MRI, treatment Surgery plus slash radiation therapy, mortality. Malignant nerve sheath tumor was the main cause of death in a study of 1,895 patients with NF1 from France in the time period 1980-2006 indicated excess mortality in NF1 patients compared to the general population. The cause of death was available for 58 patients. The study found excess mortality occurred among patients aged 10 to 40 years. Significant excess mortality was found in both males and females. Six or more cafeola spots over 5 mm in greatest diameter in prepubertal individuals and over 15 mm in greatest diameter in postpubertal individuals. Note that multiple cafeola spots alone are not a definitive diagnosis of NF1 as these spots can be caused by a number of other conditions, two or more neurofibromas of any type or one plexiform neurofibroma, freckling in the axillary or inguinal regions, 
optic glioma, two or more lish nodules, a distinctive osseous lesion such as sphenoid dysplasia, or thinning of the long bone cortex with or without pseudarthrosis, a first degree relative with NF1 by the above criteria. Prenatal testing may be used to identify the existence of NF1 in the fetus. For embryos produced via in vitro fertilization, it is possible via pre-implantation genetic diagnosis to screen for NF1. Chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis can be used to detect NF1 in the fetus. People with NF1 have a 50% chance of passing the disorder on to their kids, but people can have a child born with NF1 when they themselves do not have it. This is caused in a spontaneous change in the genes during pregnancy. The National Institutes of Health has created specific criteria for the diagnosis of NF1. Two of these seven cardinal clinical features are required for positive diagnosis. There is practical flowchart to distinguish between NF1, NF2, and schwannomatoses. NF1 is a progressive and diverse condition, making the prognosis difficult to predict. The NF1 gene mutations manifest the disorder differently even amongst people of the same family. This phenomenon is called variable expressivity. For example, some individuals have no symptoms, while others may have a manifestation that is rapidly more progressive and severe. For many NF1 patients, a primary concern is the disfigurement caused by cutaneous dermal neurofibromas, pigmented lesions, and the occasional limb abnormalities. However, there are many more severe complications caused by NF1, although most of them are quite rare. Many NF patients live perfectly normal and uninterrupted lives. There is no cure for the disorder itself. Instead, people with neurofibromatosis are followed by a team of specialists to manage symptoms or complications. In progress and recently concluded medical studies on NF1 can be found by searching the official website of the National Institutes of Health.